Hello again, and welcome to podcast number 17, where we're going to turn our attention to strong acid weak base titrations. On the whole, these titrations have very similar characteristics to our weak acid strong bases. We just have to remember what we are starting with right, and what we're ending with, and that's going to change a couple of things in our titration curves. So for our strong acid weak base titration example, notice that I am showing hydrochloric acid and it's going to react with ammonia and we're going to then produce our ammonium cation and some water. So again, right, when we look at this, it has a relatively large value for RK, meaning that this reaction for the most part goes almost to completion. Right? We also have many of the same things that we saw for our weak acid strong base. Right? For our half neutralization or halfway to the equivalence point, it is still, the pH is still the pKa of our acid. But notice that for at the equivalence point, our pH is going to be slightly acidic now. All right, so when we had a weak acid strong base, it was slightly basic. For a strong acid weak base, it is slightly acidic. Also though, note that at the beginning of our titration, we are going to have some weak base and some of its conjugate acid, right? We're gonna be doing partial neutralization when we start. And so if we look, right, this region, kind of in here, right, this is our buffer zone, right, that is essentially a buffer in that area, and again, if you go back and you look at our slides when we were talking about, right, our buffer capacity, it looks a lot like that as well. In this case, it's going to be inverted because we're starting with a base and going to an acid, but it still has that same characteristic curve that a buffer does, and that's because those two things are present in there. Well, as you look at our HCl and ammonia titration, right, notice that right, our original pH in this case starts with a pH above seven, it's not super, super high, but it is, you know, somewhere around like 12 or so. So it is a high pH. If we want to calculate the pH, notice that before titration, right, the only thing in there is a weak base. And so in order for us to calculate the pH, we could do that by saying that the Kb is equal to our OH concentration squared divided by, right, and in this case, it's gonna be our weak base concentration. All right, again, right, as we then add in and start titrating this, remember that at the beginning, we're making that buffer solution and at one half the equivalence point, the pH is equal to the pKa, just like we did for our previous podcast and we worked out the sample problem, right? The reason for that is because the rest of that factor is the log of one, which is gonna be zero, right? The rest of our Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And again, as we get close to the equivalence point, the buffer is going to be running out. And so thus, as we dump in more and more, eventually we're going to run out of any weak base for it to react with. And once that runs out, then our pH is going to fall rapidly. Right, we're going to get that quick falling through our equivalence point, and then we're going to end up with a low pH at the very end. Much along the lines of when we were talking about our weak acid strong base, we have to pick the right type of indicator when it comes to a strong acid weak base. And so the pH at the equivalence point, right, remember is going to be acidic, right, which is lower than seven. And so we have to pick an indicator 
right, who will change color in an acidic pH. Right, so we need something that's going to change color at a pH of, say, somewhere around 4 or 5 in order for us to see, right, remember we want to see the color change at a pH similar to the equivalence point. So to tie in and look back at our different acid-base titrations, right? notice that we need to first off know what type of acid and base we have as a titration, whether it's strong and strong, strong and weak. right? There's never a weak acid, weak base titration. right? But we need to know those. All of them have large values for our equilibria constant, meaning that the reactions are going to basically go to completion between all of these things. And we also need to know the pH at the equivalence point, right? When it's strong acid, strong base, super easy. We write down the number seven and we move on with our lives. But when it's weak acid, strong base, right? When it's strong base, the pH is going to be basic. When it's strong acid, right, it's going to be acidic. And so we need to know those, and we got to be able to calculate those as well, which I am quite certain we're going to be doing on our next podcast. So I'll see you on our next podcast.